for. Nothing posh, nothing fancy, just any old bit of paper will do. You want A4 or A2? Well, it doesn't matter what size, it can be any size really. Okay, so get yourself a, a pencil or a pen. And what we're going to do, I'll, I'll, put, I'll show you in a minute my, my own um, drawing, but it's not a drawing, it's what we call the infinity sign. I don't know if anyone's done this before. The infinity sign is like a figure of eight on its side. So I'm going to get you just to start drawing with your pencil, just moving your pen around the page. Whoops, I'll use a different pen so you can see it. Uh, right, so like that. Okay, just, just relax and let the pen go into that. Gentle movement, okay? Is there like a spy or Yeah, like cookies. All right, keep going with that. And I'm just going to give you some different instructions as we go along. Just notice how you're breathing. Just breathe slowly and gently as you're, as you're letting your pen just go with the flow. And notice, how are you holding your pen? Are you holding it at the top like me? Or very tight at the bottom? If you're holding it at the, at the bottom, it won't flow as well. So if you hold it, hold on, at the top like me, and just let it, let it go relaxed. Okay. Can I just ask you to put yourself on mute so we can just keep going quietly, all right? Now, as you go, what I'd like you to do is to shut your eyes. Close your eyes and let it just, just flow. See how that feels. Keep your eyes closed. And as you go round that figure of eight, get when you get to the middle, start going the other way. Go the other way. Last thing, change hands. Swap hands with your pen. Keep your, open your eyes if you like. You can look, but swap hands. And then swap hands again, back to the other hand. Okay. So the purpose of that was just to Relax, really. I mean, it's not a brilliant piece of art or anything. It's just a, a kind of relaxation technique. Um, and if you notice, I don't know about you, but I quite like holding my pen at the top. It's a looser way of drawing. Um, obviously, if you want detail, you're going to hold it a bit further down. Uh, if you're holding a pencil or a pen, um, that's fine. So the next thing I'd like you to do 
is to get another piece of paper or the back of that back piece. It's up to you. You can change, you can do the other side. And I'd like you to fold it into four. We're going to do some rough sketches. While I'm on the point, I'm just wondering, has everybody got um, a leaf or a, like a branch or a piece of ivy or something like that? This is your chance now to just go and get something or a cabbage leaf, um, whatever you like, really. Um, I've got a lovely thing I picked up yesterday, which is actually some seeds. Everyone's run off to the fridge or the garden. <laughs> So you need something to draw. Can be a, a leaf from the uh, a, a vegetable or a branch. Some leaves. <clears throat> I like. I really like the ivy. Piece of ivy I picked up in the park yesterday. <clears throat> okay. So if you've, you've done your piece of paper into four, and people have run off to get things, but if you'd like to start in the top left-hand corner, and, <clears throat> and <clears throat> I'll repeat this for the people who've gone and come back, but um, what I'd like you to do is to, to have a little go at doing, we're going to do some different exercises in different squares of your paper, but if you'd like to just do a rough sketch of a part that you like in one corner, okay? So <clears throat> for me, I've done, I've started just to do a little sketch in the top corner of my, of my IB, okay? I'll do it in pen so you can see better. Um, just a rough sketch. See how you get on with that, and I'll show you some different ways of of um, changing that around, and, okay? So I'm just gonna give you um, three minutes to do that from now, okay? Three minutes to do a rough sketch, just the main lines, no, no shading, uh, no detail. Just get in the, thing, the lines that you think are important, all right? So if you went away and came back, all we're doing is in one corner of your piece of paper, we're just doing a little rough sketch of your, your leaf or branch or leaves, just a rough sketch to get the main lines in, just to see how you get on with the rough sketch. And then we're going to have a go at doing some other exercises. And you've got about a minute and a half left, okay? If you're unsure, unmute yourself and ask me. You're not quite sure what we're doing.
just get in what you think are the, the important lines. Okay. Don't worry if you haven't finished. <clears throat> I've just done a little rough sketch. And I've done it in Biro so that you can see. It's my quick drawing of my piece of ivy. And I haven't put any detail in. I'm just sort of looking at the thing. And um, what you want to try and do is to sort of do several sketches so that you get familiar with what you're drawing. You kind of look at it a lot so that you can really see the, the shapes and the form and the flow of the flow of how it moves because this is a lovely thing it, it kind of moves really beautifully it's like got a lovely kind of flow to it and the leaves are sort of um they get bigger which i like so look at the thing that you're drawing the object you're drawing and really really look at what you like about it see what you like about it okay so the next in the next square you've done one square in your next square, what I'd like you to do is to try and change the scale so that you're going to make it probably zoom in, make it bigger, find an area that you, you particularly like and um, zoom in and think about how you're placing it on the page. Are you going to um, just draw part of the leaf, part of the branch. Um, look at the bit that you really like and see where you're going to put it on the page. Imagine that that's your horizon line there. Are you going to put it at the top of the page? I love the hearts, Sonia. <laughs> um, at the top of the page or at the bottom of the page? I did this with a kale leaf a little while ago and That's the bit I really
Oh, oh. 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 Uh. Hi everybody, I'm sorry, I have internet problems. So sorry, I hope you're all happily drawing. I disappeared for a while. <laughs> uh, back to my daughter. <laughs> right, so you should have two drawings. <clears throat> One rough sketch of the whole thing and then the second of a, a close-up. If I stop you there, we're going to do a, a third drawing at the bottom here. And we're going to do, this is, this is different for you. Um, what, what I'm going to suggest is a, a continuous line drawing. Now, I don't know if anybody's done this, but it's, it's actually quite helpful, it's quite useful. If I show you, I'm just going to do the same drawing as the third, as the second drawing, the same position, the same piece of um, leaf, whatever. And I'm going to, going to try and do it just with a continuous line, not taking my pen off the page. Okay, so I'm gonna, if you watch mine, if you can see me drawing, I'm just gonna have a go. It doesn't matter if you go over the same lines again. I'm going to have a go just drawing using one line. And you really have to look. You really have to look at what you're doing. You look at the, the subject and your eye should be going back and forth from what you're drawing to, to the page. So if you see what I'm doing, I'm just sketching it out like that. And I'm going in and then it's got another bit there. So if you see what I'm doing, you have a go at that too. You'll find you'll get a quite a characterful drawing that way. Okay, have a go at that, continuous line drawing. I don't know if you're using a pencil or a pen, but I, biro is really fun to draw with. It takes away the kind of fear of making a mistake too, because you're not worried about going over it again. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just another minute or so on that one. And if you've kind of done the outline, what I'm going to suggest to you is to fill in with your pen or pencil, the background with just a little bit of shading like this, so that you're showing the negative space, the, the space around I'm literally just going to shade it roughly so that you're going to look at the negative space
So it's a rough drawing, but it's I've just shaded in the negative space. For those of you who are ready to move on, in the last, the last corner, I'm going to give you a choice. If you see my kale, kale page, I kind of had the leaf and I moved it around the page until I got a, um, a composition that I liked. And then when I got the composition that I liked, which was um, that one, in fact, it was the first one I did. <laughs> I started to put in some, not particularly realistic, but sort of expressive lines and marks into it. So on your last piece, if you're ready, don't worry if you're not, but if you're ready to move on to the last square, have a go at making a composition that's pleasing, that you like. If you want to change the position or the scale, change it, make it bigger or smaller. Move it around on the page. And then put in some, a little bit of shading or some marks. Because we're going to make, just, just quickly, and I don't mean don't take too long, but we're going to use whichever one you like best to make a bigger drawing, if that makes sense. I did a different one with leaves where I put in different And think about the background too. Are you going to have a plain background? Is your background going to be the, the interesting part, like the, the negative space? Are you going to put marks into your actual subject or leave it, leave it blank like this one and put the back, background as the interesting part? Just another two minutes on, on that one.
So I've got what I quite like as a composition. Now the reason I like that is because it gives the character of the leaves. Let me just fold it. It also leaves, leaves, sorry, sun, it leaves the, um, quite a large section of the page empty, which I quite like. It's, a, it's, an, it's sort of half and half, but diagonally. So I love these shapes. And what I want to do is kind of develop that onto a larger piece of paper. Okay, so if you'd like to get a larger piece of paper when you're ready, whatever size you feel comfortable with or have at home, handy. And it's up to you, you don't have to use a pencil. You can use a biro, you can use um, um, cray crayons or pastel or watercolor, whatever you like, whatever you've got, um, and have a go at developing your, your best one from your four, okay? Whichever one you, you feel you like, we'll develop it a bit more onto a big sheet. And then we're going to add various things like, um, think about it, either like I've done on this one, we do um, mark, mark making. I did a bigger one like that with um, kind of marks and patterns and shapes, which I, I just love. I can't, can't help drawing with biro, just playing around with with shapes. And I like what I like about that. Again, same sort of thing is I like the blank bit here. I know I've written on it, but it's blank there. And I like that plain central stalk. It's sort of, it's calm, calm areas and very busy areas. That's what I like about that. So just think about what you've drawn, which bits you, you kind of feel interest you. What kind of composition, what, um, yeah, what scale, how big? I mean, I've zoomed in, I haven't got the end of the leaf at all. But I played around with that quite a lot before I was sort of happy with the composition. Okay, so have a go at developing your best one onto a bigger sheet and think about whether you're going to do marks, are you going to do black and white? Are you going to put a bit of color into it? Whichever medium you like or whichever you have. Andy. Please do ask questions if you like. Unmute yourself and ask anything you like. You want to draw it in in um, pencil first and then go over with pen, that's fine. And when you're enlarging something, so I'm going from this, this size to this size, which is enlarging. What helps is to look at the position on the page, kind of map it out so that you, and you're looking at what I call the negative shapes. So uh, these shapes around things and the relationship to each other. So if you're looking at um, this leaf, look at where each part comes on the page. I've got a kind of negative space here with a, a sort of V that, if you look at the edge of the page, it's that bit there. And then this uh, vein kind of comes uh, what, a third, let me think, about just over a third of the way up the page. And then again, it's right at the top of the page, this bit. So look at the, look at the flow of the, of the stalk and look at the negative shapes, okay?
And if you want to use your drawing rather than the original original um, thing that you're drawing from, that's fine too. I'm actually not looking at the original um, leaf, I'm looking at my drawing to draw out the bigger one. And at this drawing out stage, don't get too bogged down by detail. You can always put the detail in later. That's often my downfall is I get too bogged down in detail. You lose the overall picture. Another trick for those of you who don't do much drawing or anybody really is half close your eyes to look at the light and the darks. 
you find that you'll be able to see them much more clearly with your eyes half closed. Don't be frightened to experiment. I'm using um, chalk pastel and I'm just putting some water on it. Works quite nicely. So another thing, rather than getting too bogged down in the same drawing, what I'm going to suggest is that you stand up and have a little look at what you've been doing. Give yourself some space between your, well, between you and the drawing. And I'll show you another couple of pieces that either I've done or I've been inspired by. So I really like this. I think it's kind of wonderfully loose, but kind of different. And they've started with leaves, but they put in, I don't know what the original um, inspiration was, but there's sort of lovely marks and things in there and colors. So it's very busy. But I, I think that's really fun. They've sort of gone in with a, a pen or something and done some interesting shapes and patterns around the leaves. So that's one, one bit of inspiration. So that's one I, I did of sort of some leaves I picked up yesterday and I was thinking of either, I don't know, I might, might put just a plain background or I could play around and put some marks in the background. I think if the leaves were less detailed, I'd, I'd put some marks in the background, probably. Um, on this one, another idea is to get a piece of paper and stick down a piece of newspaper on top or any old bit of paper. I did one inspired by the, this was a piece I found in the park and I I drew it and painted it onto, it's an old to-do list. I had a bit of colored paper. I just stuck down my to-do list and then drew on top of it. And it's amazing how, how it takes away the pressure to get it absolutely perfect. It, it really does. It takes the pressure off. If you have a piece of paper with something stuck down or just not a white piece of paper, it's that sort of blank piece of white paper that can be quite off-putting, the sort of pressure to perform, and it takes that away a bit somehow. So either newspaper or an old envelope, or um, it sort of adds interest and takes the pressure off. And then with the kale leaf, I got some watercolor and did, did some, a piece based on the kale leaf, which 
wasn't from the original because the kale leaf kind of shriveled up and died, but I had my drawings. So I went on and played around with some watercolor. I think, I think the answer is to just do, if you can find time and you have the, have the energy and whatever, yeah, just have a go and play around and experiment. And don't worry about your audience. So we've got just over five minutes left online. If you want to carry on, or if you want to ask me anything, or um, you're very welcome to show me. I'd love to see if you're feeling brave. <laughs> uh, it's completely up to you. Uh, but do do ask me anything, or or show me. Lovely, Susie. That is beautiful. Well, oh wow, pen, color, look, galaxy. My goodness, 
Oh, brave people. These are beautiful. Laura, I don't know what you've used there. It's gorgeous. It's paint. Say again? It's paint, watercolor. Paint, watercolor paint. Okay, fab. Um, Grace, let's have a look. Hold it closer for me, Grace. Grace is... Oh, I love it. Um, this is my my mum's. Fabulous. Do you know, it would be lovely if you could... Um, anyone... Oh, I love that. The moon. Look at the marks around those. Yeah. That's gorgeous. Um, if anyone is able to take a photo and, and um, email to me, that would be amazing. It's so nice to see people's work because it inspires me too. May, is that Mena? Oh, wow. They, these have got such character, such character. It's, it's really, really pleasing to see everybody's different takes on a similar, you know, a similar theme. Um, but basically, the world is your oyster. Just have a go. Oh, Mariella. Woo! <laughs> this is great. It's very exciting. It really is inspiring. I love it. And, um, you know, it, don't, don't be um, held back by uh, sort of traditional ideas about what goes with what. I mean, I, you know, like I'm, I'm having a go with... Uh, pastel with water on it and then I might go back with a pen I'll probably ruin the pen but I'm, I'm gonna have a go anyway <laughs> and uh, and then see what I do in the here whether I leave it or or cut it out and stick it onto a background I don't know we'll see we'll see do ask any questions if you have any I have a go at answering And one little tip, which you may know already, is for, um, rather than using black on something to darken it, if you're using green and you want to darken it, um, I would use a dark blue. If you've got a dark blue, it works really nicely. I, I used to be involved in GCSE and uh, a lot of the children well, teenagers would put in black to darken things, and it's it's interesting because it the blue makes it much kind of stronger somehow, or even a dark red. If it's brown, you can add a dark red or a very dark brown to make something darker to strengthen the, the shadow. If you're doing a black and white drawing, it's fine, and, and there is a place for um, black paint or pen or whatever, but. Not, not necessarily.
So I'm going to carry on with mine. I'm putting in blue biro, strange. So if I might just encourage you to, to do the same, carry on. Do, some, do lots of mindful drawing when you can. And um, I'm hoping, we've got to sign off now, but I'm hoping that we'll, we'll be able to do some more of these. Um, do sign up if, you, if you've enjoyed today and tell, tell people because... Uh, you know, it's, it's um, therapeutic apart from anything else, which is for me. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, it's so nice to see everybody. It's really lovely. Come back again. Thank you. <laughs> That's Thanks. a pleasure. Pleasure. Keep drawing. Thank Thanks, Dee. Thank it's you. a pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. I don't know how to go. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Hello. Hello, William. You just had the most fun ever. Can't you imagine?